Hello, my name is Rachel and I love crafting. And uh, today what I'm doing is I have these three uh, silicone resin molds from Amazon and they're all coffins. So I was just going to do a, I guess a little review of these three uh, coffin molds from Amazon and also show you how I do the uh, rainbow coffins. So, <laughs> sorry about no makeup today, I just wasn't in the mood, and you can see behind me this huge mess. I'm getting ready for my next convention, which is only in a few weeks. It's like September, I want to say like 9th, 10th, and 11th. It's the uh, Tidewater Horror Convention in Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm excited, looking forward to that. I've been putting together a few more pieces for that. I swear, after this next one, I will put stuff in my Etsy. <laughs> I keep saying that. I keep saying, after the next show, after the next show, but after this next show, I'll put stuff in my Etsy, I promise. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Wish me luck on that. Okay, so let me just go over these three molds with you first. Um, first we do have this one. This one is the most shallow of the molds. And I did a test to see how much resin each one takes, because that's kind of important, because you need to know how much money you're investing into making one of these if you're going to be reproducing them to sell, which I, I am hoping to do if I can start getting them uh, to come out without bubbles and stuff. <laughs> like, the ones that come out with bubbles, like, go into my grab bag pile, and the ones that come out perfect, then I'll actually, you know, sell those. Um, but, yeah, this one is, uh, like I said, the most shallow. It takes the least amount of resin. It does have this little cross on the bottom of the the coffin and it actually came with four different lids so we have like the triple moon goddess with a pentagram we have that eye and then we have these two haunted house ones one with the the cat and the bat moon and the other with a uh, pumpkins and a bat so but the one we're going to do today is this one <coughs> and then number two this one is probably the standard coffin mold. This one is the most common one on Amazon. That's, um, you know, when you search for coffin mold, you'll see tons of this one. And it's just your standard coffin mold. Um, the thing with these two is because of the way they are, when you put the resin in, the sides will bow. And I actually, I do have a fix for that. Um, and, and I'll show you when we get there. But basically it's, I take little hard, boxes things as something that's hard and flat and push them up against there to keep them in the proper place and for the most part that has been working but that is uh my one complaint with both of these the, this third one however is amazing uh this one you you can it's again from amazon and you can definitely find uh, a couple of listings with this but it's not as common as this one and and i'll tell you what the difference is see how it has these little side supports because it has the side supports both on the lid and on the body you don't need to do the keep the sides in that actually keeps the sides in on its own so this one comes out in my opinion comes out the best with the least amount of effort but it also takes the most resin of all three this one like this first one was like if i remember correctly three ounces four ounces and then this one is closer to five ounces. Uh, this one also has a much thicker lid. When they're done, we'll compare the lids as well. So you'll be able to, to see at the finished product. But you can probably even tell just from here how much thicker this lid is. And that's why it does take a lot more resin. Because I feel like these parts are pretty much the same size. So you can probably already tell the review part. This one's my favorite. <laughs> but... I still uh, really like this one just because it has all the fun lids and you can do some fun stuff with it. But we're going to flip this around to Craft Vision. And first I'll show you how I paint them. Of course, I won't paint every single one of them on camera, but I'll give you the general gist of how I do the rainbow coffins. And then uh, we will mix up a batch of resin for each one and um, then Tomorrow, I'll come back and unmold them and we'll compare the three different coffins unmolded. So let's flip to Craft Vision. So to get started, we just need a couple of tools. I'm using this little paint brush. I have like cups of paint brushes, different sizes and shapes, but I'm just gonna be using this one today. And also I use this to wipe off the brush between colors. Um, you could also use one of those makeup sponges. That would work really well, but I don't have an extra one of those. And then of course I'm gonna need my rainbow colors. So I have this scarlet red, fresh orange, 
pale yellow. This is gold green, vivid blue, and a violet purple. And sometimes I switch those up because I have, you know, lots of different ones, uh, shades of these different colors. So I have um, some that are like, they're supposed to be a color shift and occasionally I'll use those, but I just wanted to do the more direct colors this time around. And then I start with red because uh, the, red, the rainbow goes red, orange, yellow, <laughs> green, blue, purple. That's why they're lined up like this. I start with red and then I figure out like, what do I want to do for this one? So for this one, I'm going to do like bottom and top. So and of course you can create this however you want, put your colors on however you like, but I'm just gonna throw a bunch of red in this corner and then throw some red down in this corner. And I'm gonna do the same with the lid. And I let like all the extra fall down into the crevices and I'll mix all that in later because that gives a kind of a cool like marbled effect on the um, sides of the piece. Like if you don't straight up do the color and just let the different colors fall down into it. <laughs> so orange next. You can see I'm leaving a lot of excess in there which I will once I get all the stripes in. I will blow all that out into the trash can. And hopefully I left enough room for those three more colors. Looks like I gotta be a little more careful through here. <laughs> Is that green next? It looks like I did not leave enough for two colors there. So we're just gonna do a thin one of blue. And then purple. <laughs> so like, <laughs> try to be more scientific about this and measure better, but I kind of like the free for all methods. Although I don't think I'm going to get a lot of purple to actually show up on this one. Okay, so before I blow out all the excess, I then just go in and make sure I've rubbed it really nice through the edges. Just mix all those colors together. So I kind of like that effect. And then I'm going to empty this out in the trash can. So that gives you the basic idea of how I paint the molds. I'm going to go paint the other two molds off camera and then we'll come back and start with the resin. So I have finished painting the other two coffins. You can see I did this one in stripes. I was able to get two full rainbows on the bottom, but I didn't measure very well for the top. So my second full rainbow at the top ends in blue. <laughs> and then I decided to do this one a little bit different as well. We are going to start with this one because this one is the one that takes the least amount this one takes about three ounces move this stuff out of the way for now focus on this so i have one of these little reusable cups with the up to 100 milliliters about 30 milliliters is an ounce so i'm going to do 90 milliliters because that'll be our three ounces and hopefully i remember that i just needed three ounces uh, but i guess if that's too little i'll find out all right so i use a different like resin just about every single time i do this <laughs> oh and i'm about to put my mask on so my uh voice is probably going to get muffled
Okay, now that I've stirred that for three minutes, I'm going to add some of this silver interference powder. Oops. <laughs> I might have got a little carried away there. This might be pretty silver. I was going for a touch. Looks like I got a lot. <laughs> And this is like the first time I've ever used this particular brand of resin. And this one does seem to have quite a few bubbles. I feel like a couple of my pieces the last time I used this came out with a few too many bubbles. Um, I do have a heat gun which will help us get rid of those once we pour them into the mold. But especially down in the edges, the bubbles can be pretty all over the place. Okay, so that's... That, and I'm also going to add some of this chunky glitter, because why not? And when you're stirring your resin, always make sure to scrape your sides and the bottom. Like, if you don't stir it well enough, it can cause it to not harden. So that's why I set a timer and do at least three and up to five minutes, depending how much I'm doing. So next we're going to pour into the mold. Start with this lid mold. And I start with a small amount and then I try to get it down into the corners. This can sometimes help alleviate bubbles because if you get every ounce or every bit of it covered in resin, the resin will kind of migrate to the places where it's been. I don't know how to explain it, but. Right. That seems to have been exactly the right amount, which is a good thing. The lid is fine, but you can see how this coffin bows out. So what I do for this, I actually take boxes like this, and then I push them into place. And sometimes you can do it for like these edges too if you need to. Something like that. But yeah, so basically I just do something like that. And uh, I'm actually going to be moving this over. But um, so this is what I'll be doing with it when I put it in the spot where it's going to sit and cure. But before we move it over there, let me let it expand back out. And I have a heat gun, which we're going to use to get rid of some of these bubbles. I am going to take this over to where it's going to sit and cure, and then we'll come back and we'll do the next one. Okay, so this time I've mixed up five ounces. I forgot I was only supposed to mix up four ounces this time. It's supposed to be three, four, and five. Um, but we'll see how much we have left over. <laughs> and this time I'm going to add a little bit of lilac powder. Try and control it a little bit more this time. Okay, so we're just going to add just a little bit of lilac powder. And going to go for a different glitter. I'm going to put in this like holographic blue. Uh, might be a little bit too much, but you know, never have too many sparkles. 
Oh, I suppose the chunkier glitters can also be responsible for some bubbles, depending how they fall inside your mold. Okay, I think that's mixed well enough. And we are once again filling the molds. And actually, I don't know if you can see, I only have about half an ounce left. So I guess this one takes four and a half ounces because I made five ounces total. So we just have a little bit left here in the bottom. And I really should have wore gloves. <laughs> I remembered my mask but forgot my gloves. Okay, so same thing where I'm going to heat gun out the bubbles and then transfer it over to where it's going to cure and uh, I will uh, once again be using those boxes to straighten out my sides like I did with the last one. So we'll be back in a few minutes to finish our final one. Okay, this time I've mixed up six ounces, although this should only take five. Um, I was able to use up most of this. There's still a little bit in here and a lot of chunky glitter there at the bottom. A few of those pieces of glitter did get in here because I did use the same stir stick. But to this one, we're going to add some of this violet interference powder. And some of this fine purple glitter. That's pretty light in color. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. I'm going to add this orchid. As you guys can tell, I just sort of do this impulsively. I don't really have a plan. I just add things and hope for the best. <laughs> As you can see, this one doesn't bow out because it has that structure, so that's why this one is my favorite. <laughs> it just, it does take the most resin, but it also seems to just be the better design overall. I wish they did that for all of them, especially the smallest one that takes the least amount of resin. So that one's a real pain. That one has the most bowing walls. Just trying to clean up the edges a little. And of course, you know, there's always always a little sloppy and have to trim some off when it's done but that's fine and then of course I'll go over this with the heat gun uh, try to get any remaining bubbles out and uh, then I'm just that's it for today I'm gonna see you guys for you it'll be no time at all but for me it'll be the next day and we will unmold these and compare so it's the next day I'm back and it's time for my favorite part the unmolding I love unmolding it's just so satisfying <laughs> So um, we'll do the three coffins last because those are the, what we're actually reviewing and talking about. But I had extra uh, resin so I uh, from several of the batches, so I was able to make a few other things. And then I had to make a little extra, extra resin to finish off this box because I didn't have quite enough for this whole box. But we'll see. But let's start with uh, just this cute little, uh, this is the uh, vampire bat skull mold. And here we have him. And then we have one of the little kitties. How cute. And then we'll do the round box. Looks like I overfilled it just oops. 
Looks like I overfilled it just a little bit and there is some I'm gonna have to trim off there along the edge, but not a big deal. Let's see how the lid came out. And as usual, I did get a bubble in my lid. That is a, a uh, issue I have been noticing with these particular molds is I keep getting bubbles in my lids. But I'm sure if I pay a little more attention and uh, like put something inside under the rim, I might be able to alleviate those issues. But there's that one. Okay, so enough of that stuff. Now let's get to why we're actually here, and that's these three coffin molds. So I actually did run into an issue <laughs> where it was this one, this coffin mold right here. He, he got overfilled a little bit, and then when I pressed him in with the boxes, he overflowed, and I got resin everywhere, and I got it all over this box, and this box no longer opens because it's now resin shut. <laughs> As you can see, I tried to force it open, but it ain't happening. So I guess this box is now always going to be used to press the sides together. <laughs> but because of that, it's like, it's a little bit low right there. So <laughs> hopefully it still came out, but we'll start here. But yeah, definitely be careful of that when you're working with these. Like maybe press it together before you finish filling it in. Just to make sure you don't get what, what happened to me. <laughs> Right, looking pretty good. The rainbow came out nice. And I like I love the the watercolor look of the sides. I think that's really fun. And that's just from the extra powders getting down in there. And again, I have a little trimming that needs to be done because like I said this one this one did the major overflow thing. Uh, but and and the bottom is a little bit messed up because of that. As you can see it's got like an edge to it, but that's fine. It still came out pretty decent. And here is the lid for that one. Lots of glitter. And the lid, once again, got some serious bubbling in it. <sighs> Always frustrating. Really need to work on that more. But, so that's this mold. Ah, also, with the pressing in of the sides, sometimes the lid doesn't quite fit right afterwards. So I have to do some trimming to get that lid to fit in right. Okay. And then next we're going to undo this one. You can see this one still bowed out just a little bit there. I didn't have something to press that in. Bowed out just a little bit there. Ooh, but that rainbow came out super pretty. I really like that rainbow. And again, a little bit of trimming that needs to be done. A little bit of warping. But not terrible. Ooh, the rainbow is super pretty on this one though. And our lid actually came out pretty decently, like there's one little bubble right there. But other than that, I think this lid did, oh, there's another bubble there, Never mind. <laughs> there's, there are still a couple small bubbles here, but they're not too bad. But I really like the way the rainbow came out on this one. And that one's just perfect, fits just perfectly. And now for my favorite mold. <laughs> And this one again is my favorite mold because it has these so you don't have to do anything to press it in. It holds itself together without bowing too much. Ooh, and I love the rainbow in that one too. Came out nice. This one I did a more sheer or clear, sheer, <laughs> more clear resin on this one. But still it has that neat watercolor effect from all the extra powders that fell down the side. But I love the rainbow in that one. Now let's see how our lid came out. It looks like we did get, once again, just a couple of small bubbles. I think it might be this new resin that I'm using, because like I said, I try a different resin pretty much each time I do this, and some of them definitely give me more bubble issues than others, but that, I still think that came out really pretty. I really love the rainbow on that. And I think I need to trim this lid a little bit. I think I over, yeah, I overflowed the lid a little bit. So I'm gonna have to trim it a little bit before it'll fit properly. But yep, it just took a tiny bit of trimming and this lid now fits perfectly. And 
And same with this one. And that one already fit perfectly. <laughs> As you can see the this one this one is the one that takes about five ounces of resin but you can see that the lid is just a better shape it's thicker heavier just nicer looking overall so I really do like this mold best the bottoms are pretty much the same yeah the bottoms are pretty much identical but it's just the lids that make the difference in how much resin it uses and uh, the appearance. So I, so this one is still my favorite one. Although I do like this one because you have all those different lids that you can make with the different designs on them. So that one's fun too. But you know, it's it just does. You do get some bowing, and it's impossible to completely eliminate that. You can probably tell better from here that how it's bowed out a little bit, but that's fine. So those are our three rainbow coffin boxes and I'm pretty sure I mentioned earlier there will be uh, Amazon associate links down in the description box below for all three of these molds because I did get all three of them off of Amazon and uh, like I said this one this one with the little uh, things on the side for support really is my favorite but let me know what you think of these three which one was your favorite and that is all that I have for you today Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't enjoy the video, of course you can give us a thumbs down and please tell us all about it in the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel. And I hope everyone is just staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world we're living in. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.